Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Food Safety Fridays. My name's Santa Claus, uh, and this is the 38th and final Food Safety Fridays of 2015. Uh, I'm delighted to say today we've got Dr. Yasser Mustafa Mohammed back with us to do another presentation on GMO and food safety. Um, I've not been genetically modified, um, or maybe I have. Um, Yasser today is going to be um, expounding some of the myths and, and putting some science behind the topic. It creates a lot of emotion, this uh, subject, GMOs. But we're going to talk facts today, facts and figures and sense Yasser's going to bring to us. Aren't you, Yasser? That's correct, isn't it? Yes, Yasser? You're going to bring yes. some sense to it today? Good. Yeah. And I believe, uh, to mark this auspicious occasion, you've uh, you've got a special tie on today. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's a red tie. It's a very nice, actually. <laughs> so you've got your uh, Christmas tie on to join yeah. the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you look very you look you look very smart so i'll come back to you shortly if you can get your presentation yeah. ready yasana yeah i'll sure. talk about uh, uh have you enjoyed it this year ladies and gentlemen have you got a lot out of it i hope you have some of you have been to quite a few of the webinars um the good news is thanks to our sponsors we've we've uh, gained sponsorship for next year and we'll be running food safety fridays program throughout 2016 We've secured a number of the speakers from this year and next year we've got some new speakers as well, some new topics and new speakers and some other good and great speakers from this year. So really looking forward to that. Um, there is no webinar next week, hence me wearing this crazy outfit today. Uh, next week, um, well, we're coming up to the Christmas holidays in, in uh, the UK and other places. So take a couple of weeks off but we're back uh, I think it's the 9th of January but we'll send emails out okay so I'll be back for the Q&A later um, I'm gonna have a poll uh, to see if you want me to wear this or not so you can run that poll later on and uh, it's up to the audience a democratic vote to, to see if I stay as Santa Claus or return as Simon okay for now over to Yasser for GMO and food safety Okay, yes, sir. Yes, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all yours. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as we know, uh, my name is Yasser. Uh, I will do a presentation today regarding the genetic modified organism and food safety. Uh, first of all, I know that uh, this uh, topic is a little bit hot topic and there are a lot of thousands of researches over it and also still there are a big debate on the genetic modified organism if it is safe uh, to eat the, the modified food or it's not safe or it's affecting the human health or not so uh, my presentation today uh, we will talk in a very brief uh, about some uh, 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 debates and some also uh, information about uh, the GM foods. Uh, we'll start by uh, def defining what is the genetic modified organism and GM foods and why we are producing or the GM foods are produced. And again, uh, for genetic modified foods, it's uh, assessed differently from traditional foods or not. This is, we need to focus on it, which is a very important point. Uh, also, we look to the how are the potential risks to human health determined and what are the main issues of concern for human health uh, what also the issues of concern for the environment which is very important also our gm foods is safe uh, what kind of gm foods found in the market internationally and have genetic modified products on the international market passed as a risk assessment as we mentioned it uh, it's, it's uh, we need to know exactly is the same risk assessment for traditional food or not and what finally the further developments can be expected in the area of genetic modified organisms. We'll start by a poll question. Uh, uh, are we eating GM food? We have three answers. Yes, no, don't know. So I think uh, Simon, we need to start by this poll question. Yeah, I'm doing that just now. Uh, that's in the sidebar. Uh, are we eating GM food? Do you think we are eating GM food? Do you know? 
Um, a high proportion um, think we are eating GM food. Probably about over 80% believe we are eating GM food. 10% think not, and probably 10% are not sure they don't know. So yeah, that, that's what the poll looks like, Yasser. Yes, uh, actually it's a, it's a right uh, answer that uh, the majority of people really, we are eating uh, GM foods and uh, we can look on the next slide we are probably eat gmo every day around 30,000 of different products found on the grocery store shelves which is uh, a very huge number of products and also of uh, uh, consumer goods so uh, we can look on some statistics for the uh, coming from usa related to the genetic modified uh, crop production and we can found the soya bean which is uh, the highest uh, rate of the genetic modified uh, soya beans. Uh, it's around 94%. And we can found cotton also and corn, which is 88%. So uh, most probably we are eating G GM foods. Uh, even if some people, they are eating uh, like uh, a natural uh, vegetables or natural foods, again, uh, sometimes they need to go to the restaurants or they need to, to buy some... Uh, uh, bakery products, so it's not guaranteed 100% that it's free from GMO. So my uh, the question pool, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, we are eating GM foods, right? Uh, okay, let's go to through some uh, our small brief about the GMO, genetic modified organism. Uh, GMO is a direct human manipulation for an organism's DNA in a laboratory environment. It's uh, just a few uh, uh, definition about the GMO. It's uh, it's meaning everyone I think they knows that genetic modified organism is like a DNA alteration. We can we can take part of the DNA or the gene that we need to uh, uh, plant it inside uh, a vector and then put it in another organism or another uh, cells. And finally, we need to change the genetics or the structure of the DNA itself which is uh, one of the methods for the genetic modified organism. Again, uh, there are, uh, as we mentioned, there are 30,000 products found in the market, uh, which is a geneti genetic modified organism. And uh, around 87% uh, of the people, of the public people, they need GMOs to be labeled. We'll talk about the labeling later. 53% would not buy genetically modified food. So it's meaning the half, almost the half of the uh, population, they don't want GMO food. And this is what it's making uh, a, a big debate about the safety and the human health uh, effect or impact uh, related to the GM foods. And definitely USA is the largest producer for GMO, GMO crops and doesn't mandate or doesn't uh, regulate the labels for the GMO. Okay, what are genetically modified organisms and GM foods? Genetically modified organisms can be defined as organisms in which the genetic material, DNA, has been altered in a way that doesn't occur naturally. It's meaning that uh, when, we need, when we found uh, in a crop uh, uh, a gene which is resist to uh, the, uh, the diseases and resist also to some uh, a bad uh, impact to the plant itself or or any problems to the plant so we can extract this gene and then we can uh, put it in another vector or organism and this organism we can uh, put it uh, in the in the plant or in the product finally that we need to have such characteristic uh, dna on the genetically uh, dna structure for this uh, final product or plant the technology is often called uh, modern biotechnology or gene technology, sometimes also recombining DNA technology or genetic engineering. It's, there are a lot of terms and definitions. Uh, it allows selected individual genes, as we mentioned previously, to be transferred from one organism into another, also between non-related species. Such methods are used to create GM plants, which are then used to grow GM food crops. Okay. So now we know exactly the GMOs uh, or genetic modified organisms. It's, uh, we have a characteristic gene and we need to extract the gene 
and put it in a, in a small vector or organism. And this organism, we can uh, transfer it to another uh, genes for the plant or the final plant that we need uh, to have or to modify or to improve the performance for such plant. The GM foods are developed and marketed because there are some perceived advantage either to producer definitely, uh, which is uh, the most important part, and finally the consumer of these foods. This is meant to translate into a lower price, which is a, a very good benefit for the producer, and greater benefits in terms of durability and nutrition value uh, for the consumer. Why are GM foods produced? There are four, four uh, main uh, uh, reasons. Uh, first is improving the crop protection, for, as I mentioned, from any disease uh, of uh, the plants. Insect resistance, uh, also it will reduce uh, the impact of any insecticides used uh, in the crop uh, production. Virus resistance, also it will reduce the disease of viral infections. Herbicides tolerance also, uh, sometimes because we are uh, using a lot of herbicides in the plant agriculture, so sometimes we are getting a resistance. So finally, we need to modify the genetics or the DNA structure for such plant in order finally to uh, get an effect of the herbicides used. How to make a GM organism? It's a, I, I just put only uh, one slide, small slides. Uh, First, uh, we need to have a vector, as we mentioned, right? Uh, we need to take the toxin gene from a stretch of uh, DNA uh, from the bacterium and combine it with a vector. And then we need to uh, transfer it within a stretch of DNA. It's meaning that we, are, we need to cut the DNA loops uh, from, both from two sides. And finally, we need to tolerate these two sides of this DNA sector to be uh, to to be uh, or to can be stacked to the other both sides of the DNA structure, and finally, uh, we are putting again on the product or the plant itself, right? Uh, our GM foods assess differently from traditional foods. It's a very very important point actually. We'll try to focus on it uh, because most of the people they think that uh, uh, for the GM foods uh, we need to test we need to analyze with the same traditional test or, an or analysis for any traditional food, which is totally wrong. It should have a specific assessment and uh, it should have also uh, a customized assessment, risk assessment, in order to check the impact of the genetic modified organism or G GM food itself. So generally, consumers consider that traditional foods are safe. Uh, when new foods are developed by natural methods, some of the existing characteristics of foods can be altered either in a positive or a negative way. All right, so indeed, new plants developed through traditional breeding techniques may not be evaluated rigorously using risk assessment techniques. So this means that we need to have a specific assessments. It's uh, necessary that we need to check the impact of the GM food itself. So the traditional assessment or risk assessment, it's, uh, it, it cannot be at all used for uh, assessing the risks related to the GM foods. Our GM foods assess again differently. Specific system, as we mentioned, have been set up for the rigorous evaluation of GM organisms and GM foods relative to both human health and the environment. Now still there are big debate for this uh, specific risk assessments. And again, uh, any things or any research, it need to have some like and financial uh, uh, terms of uh, supplying the research center in order to create or in order to make a research about the specific risk assessment. From my point of view, uh, and in most of the producers, they actually they don't want to uh, go through this research center and they don't want to give the financial uh, a part of it and finally the research centers till now they didn't agree for the specific or for the uh, customized risk assessment for the GMO. This is one of the main uh, issues right now or one of the main uh, problems that finally we cannot know uh, if it is safe or not safe for human health. How are the potential risks to human health determined? 
the safety assessment of GM Foods General Investigate, we have three main parts. It's uh, first is the direct health effects, which is the toxicity, tendencies to provoke allergic reaction, allergenicity, and finally specific components thought to have nutritional or toxic properties. Uh, yani, uh, I think that the, from my point of view, the most or the highest risk for such uh, uh, three parts is the last one, the specific components. We'll discuss it later in the next slides. Right. Uh, how are the potential? Again, the, it's the based on the uh, stability of the inserted gene. Nutritional effects is associated with genetic modification. Any unintended effects which could uh, result from the gene insertion itself. All right. Then uh, before we go to this uh, slides, I just uh, go through the why we have this specific components that can alter because most again as i mentioned before uh, there is no specific risk assessment customized to assess the risk for the gm foods and due to this there are a lot of specific components that nobody can analyze or check or uh, 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 discover it because uh, we are using the traditional analysis or the traditional testing so finally this specific components that can uh, impact the health in a badly way, in a bad manner, finally, and, and even we don't know uh, what kind of components it can be found or what kind of uh, problems or health impact it can be happen due, due to the GM foods itself because we don't have the, the right specific risk assessment for this. All right, the main issues for concern, as we mentioned there, the main issues are allergic reaction, gene transfer and outcrossing. We'll discuss it one by one. Allergenicity, as a matter of principle, the transfer of genes from commonly allergenic foods is discouraged unless it can be demonstrated that the protein product of the transfer gene is not allergenic. It meaning that uh, we, we are taking the gene itself from one uh, uh, item or one product, and this gene may be, if it is transferred to another DNA structure, it can do or can uh, make alteration to the DNA structure, and finally, it can do an allergenicity uh, impact. While traditionally developed foods are not generally tested for allergenicity, protocols for tests for GM foods has been evaluated by FAO and WHO, and finally, they said that there is no allergic effects have been found related to or relative to GM foods currently on the market. So, till now, as per the new research uh, from FAO and WHO, there is no any allergic effects can happen, or sorry, can be found in the market itself of the product. The second main issues for concern for human health is the gene transfer. Gene transfer from GM foods to cells of the body or to bacteria in the gastrointestinal uh, tract would cause concern if the transfer genetic material adversely affects, affects the human health. So again, uh, still, the uh, science, scientists they cannot uh, discover or they cannot know exactly what is the consequence of the gene transfer from GM foods to some other cells. So uh, they don't know the mechanism of such uh, adverse effects. That's why it's a very uh, little bit very uh, strange for the scientists to know how how is the effects for this gene that can be happen. This would be practically re relevant if antibiotic resistance gene used in creating GMOs will be to be transferred. Also, the probability of transfer is low. The use of technology without antibiotic resistance genes has been encouraged by a recent FAO and WHO expert panel. The third uh, main issues for the human health is the outcrossing. The movement of genes from GM plants into conventional crops or related species in the wild, referred to as outcrossing. Uh, outcrossing here is meaning that uh, it's a different species, different breeds, and we are taking some genes and transferring to another uh, different breeds or species, uh, which is meaning it's not the same breed or it's not the same species. That's why we are telling as an outcrossing. As well as a mixing of crops derived from conventional seeds with those grown using GM crops may have an indirect effect on food safety and food security. So there's three main reasons, uh, the uh, allergenicity or allergic reaction and the uh, gene transfer and outcrossing. This is the three main 
reasons that are for concern for human health. This risk for outcrossing, again, is real, as was shown when traces of a maize type, which was only approved for feed use, appeared in maize products for human consumption in USA. It's meaning that uh, they are taking the, the gene from a made, a maize uh, used for feed and uh, planted in uh, food uh, use for, uh, of maize products for human consumption. That's why they found some uh, adverse or some uh, in, uh, indirect effect for the human health. Several countries have adopted such to reduce mixing, including a clear separation of the fields within which GM crops and conventional crops are grown. So uh, due to this, uh, there are a lot of uh, restrictions, and especially in EU, uh, regarding the outcrossing. Uh, and, but still in USA, still they are doing this outcrossing technique. All right. Are foods and ingredients developed from genetic and modified crops labeled? This is very important and it's uh, different from one country to another country about the labeling regulations. Many countries have different approach to food labeling, both on GM ingredients and other things. In the United States, all ingredients must be listed and the, uh, when there is a meaningful difference in safety composition or nutrition of crop from which we, they are uh, they were derived, that difference is properly reflected on the label. Uh, actually, in, in, in USA, there is no any mandatory requirements to put uh, a label for GM uh, or foods, but it's a, there is a mandatory requirement to put the ingredients itself, which is uh, one of their uh, FDA regulations, right? And uh, again, as we mentioned, each country establishes its own food labeling laws. In GCC, as an example, it's mandatory to put labels for any ingredients with GMO. Uh, that's any uh, products going to the GCC, uh, they should put a GMO label, and they have some laboratory testing in case that they found the product uh, is not labeled and it's the reason GMO uh, or G genetic modified food, then this time they will start to reject the batch or the uh, product itself. All right, here is a small chart about the labeling and bands. Uh, as I mentioned, in USA and Canada, don't require labeling of GMO foods. And for the green uh, part, it's uh, around 50 countries. They uh, have a significant restriction or outright bans on GMOs, and they need also to label it uh, on the product itself, like Germany, UK, Russia, China, France, Italy, Saudi, uh, Spain, South uh, Korea, Australia, like this, right? And even Brazil. All right, food labeling and what we should know. Uh, definitely, uh, we should know why, because uh, genetic modified organisms, as I mentioned, is an organism in which the G genetic material has been altered in a way that doesn't occur naturally. And it can uh, have a positive or negative impact to the human health. And the risk, it's uh, the long-term consequence of GMO on our health and environment have not been adequately, adequately investigated, and still there is a big debate on it. All right, what are issues of concern for the environment? So why we are looking for environment justice? So we, we, we need to go only for human health. No, it's very important also to look for the environment finally, because we are uh, doing or we are uh, uh, getting our food from uh, the environment itself surrounding us. So in case that any problems happen to the environment, finally it will affect our human health. The capability of GMO to escape and potentially introduce the engineered genes into wild populations. Uh, the persistence of the gene after the GMO has been harvested. The susceptibility of non-target organs, for example, like insects, which are not pests to the gene product. Stability of the gene is very important because sometimes the gene itself, when it's transferred, it's not stable on the main DNA structure. And finally, it can uh, make a, an adverse effect or impact that no, no one knows ex exactly what is the impact that can be happen during this uh, instability of the gene. Reduction in spectrum of other plants, including loss of biodiversity, is very important also. Increased, why it's lost biodiversity? Because in case that we are doing a genetic modified uh, uh, products or plants itself, maybe uh, like the bees itself, uh, they cannot found uh, what he, he can found it or what they can found it in the traditional uh, plants. Finally, it can happen or it can make an, uh, an unbalanced biodiversity. Increased 
use of chemicals in agriculture. And again, uh, we have now uh, another uh, uh, question about the GM foods. Uh, it's safe or not? Are GM foods safe? Uh, GM foods currently available on the international market have past risk assessment and again have past risk assessment which is a traditional risk assessment it's not a specific risk assessment for GM foods and are not likely to present risks for human health which is only for the traditional way in addition no effects on human health have been shown as a result of consumption of such foods by the general population in the countries where they have been approved all right, another reason, uh, different GM organisms include different genes inserted in different ways. And this means that individual GM foods and their safety should be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. And that's not possible to make general statement on the safety. So uh, there are two areas or two important points right now. We need to have a specific risk assessment, as we mentioned before. And again, we need to also look for case by case uh, because we cannot uh, put all of uh, this GM foods in one basket and we cannot uh, generalize the statement of the, that GM food is safe or not for all of the genetic modified food itself. How are GM foods regulated nationally? Uh, the way governments that regulate GM foods vary from one country to another. Uh, countries, they have some legislations in place focused primarily on assessment of risk for consumer health. Some countries, uh, uh, they are usually regulating GMOs in general, taking into account health and environment risk, as well as control and trade-related issues. In, uh, in view of the dynamics of the debate uh, on GM foods, legislation is likely to continue to evolve. And uh, actually, we found a lot of countries still, they are developing from time to time the uh, regulations related to the GM foods. It's like in, in a dynamic way. And uh, it's uh, very important uh, also to have such regulations in each country. What kind of GM foods uh, are on the market internationally? Uh, are all GM crops available in the international market today have been designed using one of the three basic traits, resistant to insect damage, resistant to viral infection, and tolerance uh, towards certain herbicides. And uh, you remember also that this is the three main uh, benefits uh, or the three main targets in order to make the GM food. All genes used to modify crops are derived from microorganisms. It's like a vector also is using during the GM transfer. Have GM products on the international market passed a risk assessment? As we mentioned, it's uh, currently passed a risk assessment, which is the regular one or the traditional one by national authorities. And again, the, there are different assessments in general, follow the same basic principles, including an assessment of environment and human health. This assessment are thorough and they have not indicated any risk to human health. So again, this risk assessment is uh, uh, more uh, traditional and it's not specific as I mentioned before, because then now there is no any researches related to a specific as my risk assessment. What further development can be expected in area of GMOs? Future GM organisms are likely to include plants with improved disease or resistance, crops with increased, uh, increased nutrient levels, fish species with enhanced cross characteristics and plants or animals producing pharmaceutically important proteins such as vaccines. Uh, regarding this uh, uh, GMO uh, developments, uh, some countries now they are working on the animal protein uh, like for cattle or cow or beef or chicken, but still uh, banned or still not yet uh, uh, approved uh, to be if uh, to be not have any problem on the human health, and still it's uh, on the research uh, cycle, so it's not yet pub, uh, on the public for the public people, and still they are doing a lot of research on it. All right. At the international level, the response to new developments can be found in, in the expert consultations by FAO and WHO and subsequent work for Codex and Hot Task Force on foods derived from biotechnology. This work has resulted in an improved and harmonized framework for the risk assessment of gene foods in general. All right, here uh, again, there are a big debate, as we mentioned before, about the gene food. 
And uh, the, every day we are founding in the newspaper that uh, GM foods is safe, GM foods is not safe like this. So let's uh, proceed, is GM foods uh, safe or not? There are uh, some opinions, we'll uh, look on this such opinion that they are mentioning that it's, they are safe. Uh, what is the main reasons that they are feeling safe within the scientific community that they paid over uh, for the safety of GM foods? As uh, because again, the consuming foods containing ingredients derived from GM foods is no riskier than consuming the same foods. So they are just uh, assessing post uh, traditional and genetic modified food, and they found that the same uh, impact to the human health, the same ingredients, the same everything related to the characteristic of the crop itself. Uh, there is no any difference. That's why it cannot have any problem to the human health which is some major scientific and government organizations agree on it. The U.S. National Academy of Science found that no adverse health effects attributed to genetic engineering have been documented in the human population. And a report also issued by uh, European Commission made the same claim. Also, the WHO concluded that GM foods are not likely nor have been shown to present risks for human health. All right. In other words, finally, the scientific consensus is that GMO don't pose risk to our health or the environment that are any different from risk posed by the non-GM crops created with modern uh, breeding programs. Here, the, there are certain uh, products related to the GM foods. We can find tomato, rice, wheat corn, uh, summer squash, canola oil, yeast, peas, soy, uh, sugar beets, wheat, cotton, alfalfa, alpha, and salmon. This is the most common product that we can found it. And again, this is a top 10 genetically modified foods, which is the soy, corn, potatoes, tomatoes, papaya, peas, dairy products, cotton seed, rice, and canola. All right, we have another poll question. Uh, is GM food safe to eat? We have three questions. Uh, sorry, three answers. Yes, no, we don't know. So we need to, to proceed okay. for this. Yeah. yeah. Be before we uh, we run that poll, I, I did run a, another uh, informal poll uh, about Santa Claus, just to say, um, seventy-seven percent want Santa Claus to come back for the Q and A. Eight percent no, you've got to be kidding, and fifteen percent joined late and didn't have a clue what I was talking about. So by <laughs> popular popular demand, uh, Santa Claus will be coming back uh, later on. Um, okay, so we've. Started that poll, is GM food safe to eat? Um, what do you think? Uh, we've got about 50% yes, 30% uh, don't know, and about 15, 20% no. So 50% are saying yes, 20% uh, no, and 30% don't know. Ah, good. <laughs> it's... Uh... Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a little bit confusing actually, and uh, let's let's see uh, actually the the main answer for this. Right till now, there is no scientific consensus on GM uh, GM all safety. It's meaning that there is uh, the the scientists till now they didn't agree that if it is safe or not safe. So it's like it should. It's like a fifty percent yes, fifty percent no. So then now it's a big debate. Then now, and this is found in the late two thousand thirteen. Nearly three hundred scientists and legal experts signed a statement affirming that there was no scientific consensus on GMO safety itself. All right. So why we made like this? Uh, let's see. Because then now. There is no epidemiological studies investigating potential effects of, of GMO food consumption on human health. Again, claims that scientific and governmental bodies endorse GMO safety are exaggerated or inaccurate. EU research project doesn't provide reliable events, ev evidence of GM food safety. List of several hundred studies doesn't show GM food safety no consensus on environmental risk of GM uh, crops. International agreements show widespread recognition of risk posed by GM foods and crops. All right, so till now, there is no full agreement about this uh, safety of the GMO itself. It's like 50%, 50%. All right, conclusion. 
There are many ethical issues related to the growing and consumption of GM, uh, genetical engineered crops. They hold potential to greatly increase the nutrition value of food as well as the productivity of crops. The productivity, as we mentioned, that it will finally have a lower price, it will be beneficial for producer and for the nutritional value related to the consumer itself while at the same time provide many safety as well environmental concerns as we mentioned before what is the environmental concerns of these decisions need to be looked to, uh, at all uh, for humanity since everyone is directly affected by the choices itself again why each person can read these details and come to different conclusion on value of genetical uh, engineered food as well as the ethical choices being made by the companies in charge of producing these foods. It's meaning that, again, uh, the producer, he want to produce, uh, he want to decrease the prices, he want to increase the production and increase the crop, and the consumer, he need to get uh, uh, the benefits of the product without any uh, bad impact to his health. So finally, we need both together, the consumer and producer agree for uh, what we need to do exactly regarding this GMO food. The ultimate choice on ge genetically engineered food should be placed onto a well-informed consumer, not held in the dark by those in power of the government and large corporations, which may, have, uh, which may not have the general public's uh, interest as their primary goal. Finally, uh, this is the main conclusion for GMO foods. And uh, now we need to go for the questions and answer, please. Okay. Right. Hmm. Well, do you want to know what a, a very old wise man thinks? Um, <laughs> yes. Yasser, you, can, you can stop sharing your slides now, Yasser. I mean, yeah, my, yes. re my reindeer uh, have been eating genetically modified carrots for thousands of years, and there's really nothing wrong with them. I mean, can't all reindeer fly? You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> um, uh, actually, yeah, it's, uh, it's something uh, amazing. First of all, it's something amazing what you are uh, uh, wearing right now as a, a nice uh, white beard <laughs> that I don't, I don't know how long i can stay like this i mean the it was 70 70 odd percent wanted me to stay like this so unfortunately I, I, so, so anyway um carol was saying um you said on one of your slides that the usa and canada um don't require um, yes. labeling of gmo yeah. but carol's carol's saying in the state of vermont in the us is now requiring GM labeling beginning mid 2016. So uh, it's starting to perhaps change uh, in some states in, in the US. Yeah, maybe they are, they are doing some changes now. As I mentioned, every, every day they are doing a lot of uh, uh, regulations, uh, updating and developments. And because of this debate, the, it's, uh, as we mentioned, the regulations itself is like a dynamic. Uh, they are working in a dynamic way. So uh, maybe, on the mid of 2013, uh, sorry, 16, they can uh, mandate or they can regulate, which is much, much better actually than before. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Chris, Christia said, yes, sir. Is a supplier required to test for GMO? I mean, can it, 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 and then she's put, it would be up to the supplier, uh, let's say an ingredient supplier to tell them their product contained GMO. Um, uh, it's it's based on the organization itself. Some organization they have some ethics to uh, test all of the products uh, uh, from the safety perspective, and uh, include also the GMO uh, perspective. Uh, but again, some organizations they said that they don't have uh, this uh, financial uh, resource that to go for the testing because it's costly. Actually, it's not an uh, it's not it's not an uh, low cost. It's expensive. And also, it need to test in a, a credit lab with advanced uh, equipments, and again with some specific uh, assessment for the GMO. It's based on the organization. Uh, if they have this financial resource, it's it's better to do it actually. Yeah, um, a, a lot of people were sort of saying that um, is it too early to say that GMO foods are safe? You know, we've we've not got a long history, um, and and perhaps that's why. A lot of people don't know or are saying no because they haven't got evidence, long enough evidence of, of yeah. being safe. Yeah. 
Yeah, as I mentioned on my presentation, uh, I mentioned there are two opinions. The first opinion, they said that it's safe uh, for the current uh, traditional assessment. Uh, some other people, they said, no, it needs to have a specific risk assessment. Uh, so we cannot mention that it's safe clearly. So uh, again, as I mentioned, in the late of 2013, 300 scientists, they mentioned that still they don't know if it is safe or not safe. And finally, they don't know exactly what is the impact for this GMO food. Yeah. I mean, in from the general public's point of view, it, it just seems... It's just one of them things genetically modified. Oh, you know, it seems it seems frightening, doesn't it? It's something that's modified. Just the word genetically, it just yeah. doesn't feel it doesn't feel right. So it it frightens yes. people in the ab in the absence of uh, even with science and facts. You know, um, yes. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. What what else we've got? Um, if you have a GMO crop that is pollinated by the same bees that pollinate a non-GMO crop, is there transfer of genetic material? <laughs> so be, uh, bees who are pollinating GMO and non-GMO crops, is there cross-contamination? <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. finally, it will. Uh, again, we cannot differentiate if the final product is uh, GM foods or not, because, again, it's like an outcrossing that uh, you are putting from... Uh, one type of bee to another type and uh, maybe they are shifting something else so it's a lichen cross contamination as we said you know. yeah. we cannot guarantee um, that is a regime yeah oh, okay um, elisa is saying if such a scientist agree that it is safe why is the US, u.s government so resistant to label gm food gmo food why are they I so think, resistant? Yeah, I think uh, because, again, <laughs> uh, they are the largest uh, crop production worldwide for the corn and for, uh, for soya and for even wheat. And finally, if it is uh, uh, doing everything by label, maybe they will affect their marketing uh, purpose or their image outside the USA itself. I think so. It's okay. like an, uh, it's a, it's a, like a beneficial uh, purpose for them yeah okay philip is saying simon i have a, i have it on good authority that aubergines in india are genetically modified for caterpillar control if these caterpillars are imported into the uk can we then say the uk is gmo free oh, uh, no I, I don't think so <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah G, wayne's saying gmo and irradiation scares more americans then science can convince them of no risk. Yeah, that's what we were saying before. Um, Rose yeah. is asking. Rose is saying, how how can we hold farmers accountable? Testing or monitoring? That's it. Should have we should have a, a strict regulations from the government itself. The strict regulations that uh, uh, farmers you cannot do any or any uh, GMO process for their farms and uh, governments they should make a like a kind of testing from time to time and check if they have something to, uh, they are doing or not i think so it's uh, all of this related to the main authorities of government itself it should have a strict regulations on it okay um let's have a look carlos S esther asked a question earlier yes sir. Uh, is yeah. there any assessment made regarding meat that comes from an animal that has been fed with GMO feed? What, what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. The, as I mentioned, there are a lot of research right now for the beef meat and for chicken. And still this on the research part is not yet approved. But uh, what I, I found it uh, during my research that still it's safe. There, there is no any impact on it. But again, because of this product, it's not uh, approved for the public, so we don't know the consequences of such impact on the human health. Uh, because we, it's not yet tested by humans uh, themselves in the public uh, regions, or for the more and more human that they can test. So I, I don't think that there is a, that there is an agreement that it's safe or not safe. Still, on the debate itself. Right. Javier said, "Has anyone noticed that Simon is wearing glasses?" Oh, he's so funny, Javier. <laughs> um, Morad's asking for a, is there a template for carrying out a GMO risk assessment? Do you know 
if there's any specific template for carrying out a GMO risk assessment? Uh, yes. Yeah, there are some uh, specific templates. Uh, I found it. But uh, still, uh, as I know, that uh, still not yet uh, finalized, actually. It's not yet uh, ag agreed by the scientists and uh, still un under development. But I, ca I can share it if uh, you want. We can share it uh, uh, on the webinar uh, for such templates. It's like a checklist, actually. It's not a template. It's a checklist uh, to know how exactly it, it is GMO foods or not, what we need to do exactly on it. Well, if you if you're prepared to share that checklist, uh, that would be fantastic. And if you can send that to me, I'll include that in the follow-up email. Yeah. That would be really yeah. good. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, yeah. so thank you. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, is growth hormone in poultry considered a GMO? Growth hormone. The growth hormones, if it is uh, genetic modified uh, hormones, definitely. It, it can finally affect the, the grass of the chicken and it can be uh, uh, called as a GM chicken. But if it is traditionally uh, uh, processed or produced, so finally it, it's not a GM uh, hormone, so it finally it will not have any uh, uh, genetically modified effect to the chicken itself. Okay. So it's all based on the GM hormones itself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Therese is asking, which is a good, interesting question, actually. How many years have GMOs been, uh, you know, around? How long have we been doing this science? This uh, almost, uh, as I noticed in the internet sites, it's uh, starting from 2000. So uh, actually exactly from 99, this is what I found, that they start to go for the risk assessment. So it's, I think it's more than... Uh, 15 years right now or 14 years right now it's doing the risk assessment itself for the gmos but how long how long have we been genetically modifying our food how how long have we been that's, doing that that's since 2000 2000 since 2000 oh, right. we start okay. to produce uh, the crops in a in a high population or in a high cross rate yeah okay well, Wayne said since Gregor Mendel in the 1880s, we'll, we'll have to look that up. At, uh, I've not, I, I've no idea who Gregor Mendel is and what he did. We'll have to look that up. Uh, is chicken considered GM food? Ed Sangela has said. Is chicken as it is considered GM food? Why would it be? I don't know. No, if the chicken is uh, again, if we are making some genetically modified uh, organisms inside the chicken, definitely it can be considered. But if it is altered for the DNA genes itself, so okay, right. Uh, how, uh, Carlotta is asking how U.S. and Canadian companies comply with European regulations. How for for any products? Yeah, for any products going outside USA and Canada, they should label it uh, based on the country itself, uh, in Europe, whatever, in GCC. They should label it exactly as a triangle label, green triangle label, that uh, this product may contain GMO foods. The problem there in USA about the labeling, that they don't know exactly if the product is they have G it's a GMO or not. Why? Because, again, we mentioned that there is no regulation related to the label itself. So farmers, uh, mixing ingredients uh, coming here and there. So finally, it can be uh, genetic modified. So they are putting the triangle label, green one, and they mention clearly that this product may contain GMO. Okay, thank you. Um, if there if there are any more questions, please type them now because we're running out of time. Uh, Wayne's just said that Mendel, uh, Gregor Mendel, is the father of modern genetics. So there's some further reading uh, for uh, attendees. Um, Afton is asking, at what point should a food product be tested to see if it is GM or not? At what point should a food product see, be tested? Uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of points. Again, uh, as we mentioned about the allergenicity, the, toxi the toxins uh, impact, and uh, the, the outcrossing or uh, the uh, specific components itself that can be happened uh, of the, uh, inside the product itself. So, so I think 
the, the problem there is the way of testing this. It's not the uh, what we need to test. What we need to test exactly, we know together, as we mentioned, the allergenic reactions and toxin and specific components. But the main debate is on the way itself of testing, which yeah. is not yet uh, developed right now. Right. Um, somebody was asking before, which is quite specific, where G in which countries is GM GMO rice uh, grown? But I'm sure you don't know that, do you? Surely. <laughs> which countries is GMO? Uh, are there any GMO cucumbers or peppers? Uh, sorry. Are there any GMO cucumbers or peppers? Cucumber uh, or pepper? Are they known to be GMO? Uh, I I don't think so. I don't think so. No. I, I didn't see actually that uh, if there is any cucumber uh, or peppers gym or not. I, I didn't see it before. Yeah. I wonder if uh, GMO products in the marketplace, in the supermarket, if they clearly labeled, I am a GMO product. Um, I wonder how successful they are with <laughs> one that's next to it uh, not being GMO. Um, so they don't shout about it. Um, so the people they will definitely select the non GMO food, in. <laughs> yeah, you're not selling uh, the GMO food, yeah, exactly. And and you know, and it could potentially be perfectly safe, yeah. yeah. Uh, Leti Leticia is saying if a processing aid is GMO and you don't find it in the end product, is it considered as GMO? Uh, uh, but again, again, the question, please, Simon. Sorry, if a processing aid, so if you use a processing aid in, in your production line and that processing aid is a GMO, but you do not find that in the end product, uh, is the product considered GMO, the end product? No, I, I, again, if uh, we, we are testing, there are a lot of laboratory tests related to uh, checking if the product contains GMOs or not. So if the final product, uh, after the lab testing, laboratory testing, they didn't found GMOs inside the product itself, so definitely it's non-GMO products. Uh, it's based on the lab testing, finally. Okay. Uh, Cla Cla Claudio's made a good point. It's estimated the world population will double by 2050. That's incredible. Uh, so GMO foods will be the solution to guarantee food for everyone. So, um, you know, when you look at it from that perspective, it's uh, very important. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, it says uh, it's based on the government uh, regulations. And again, I don't know. I, I think it's uh, maybe, maybe, yes, yes. Maybe this time we are going for GMO uh, to, to uh, provide the product itself. Okay. Uh, quite a lot of questions. You know, if someone's saying that when you're transferring from GM crops to organic crops, uh, is there a time frame? Um, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yes, yes. It's based on the soil itself. Uh, they are doing a lot of uh, uh, changes on the soil, and they are leaving the soil. I, I think I mentioned this on the, my previous organic versus non-organic. They are changing the the first and second layer of the soil itself. And again, they are uh, living for a while uh, in order to remove any chemicals uh, by, by naturally, and then they can plant the natural product. Okay. So uh, can I clarify then? Are we saying that there is there has not been any uh, report or study anywhere in the world that's linked uh, a problem with human health of any sort to GMO foods? Yeah. Till now, there is no uh, specific reports for the impact on the human health. Till now, so, so, so uh, zero negative impact yes, up to now. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. But Can again, again, Simon, uh, as I mentioned, uh, zero negative impact based on the traditional risk assessment. But again, we need to go for a specific assessment. That's very important. Maybe we can find something we we don't know exact. That's why still on the beat. Yes, sir. Can I ask you a final question? Yeah, sure. Are you happy to eat GMO food yourself and feed GMO foods to your children? Uh, <laughs> actually, no. <laughs> I'm not happy. But again, because uh, I'm still, uh, yani, 
I don't know exactly what is the impact on the long term, because uh, on the short term we know that there is no any impact, but on long term we don't know. So, um, yani I, I I don't think that I'm going to eat such GM. If if I found the label, I will not buy this product actually. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. So, yeah, so it's like we were saying before, if you're presented with a choice on the supermarket shelf with a uh, GMO next to a non-GMO next to an organic, now yeah. you have a choice of three there. And I think I, like you, would tend to go for the organic, organic if it was good value for money, or maybe they're just the standard. But I certainly yeah. wouldn't go for the GMO. Um, yeah. But maybe in the future when the shelves don't have any organic and don't have many standard and they only have gmo because there's not enough food in the world to feed everyone mm. then we will mm. have to do that um, <laughs> okay yeah you, you know simon finally you know that uh, even we don't know yeah, we are going to restaurants and we are eating food and there is no regulation to restrict the label or, or sorry to restrict the gm foods so finally we are eating gm foods in a daily basis yeah, yeah. yeah okay right we're going to finish there yasa uh, uh thank you for you've done three presentations this year and they've all been really great stimulated lots of conversation so on behalf of myself personally and the ifsqn and all the attendees today and for your previous webinars thank you so much thank you thank you Simon. i'm really hoping that you'll be back next year i'm, I'm trying to twist your arm to do one next year so I'll, yeah, I'll sure. be in touch with you, yes, sir. Sure. So thanks very All much right, for today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, I'm back, uh, minus the beard. Um, it was uh, a bit too much. Uh, I'm going to lose the hat in a second, but what I will do is I'll put your certificate on. Uh, oh, it's messed up me nice hair, um, what I've got left of it. Um, so thanks for your attendance today. Uh, and for some of you who've attended more, like I say, it has been our 38th uh, webinar of the year, Food Safety Fridays. That's thanks to our presenters like Yasser, who've done some fantastic presentations throughout the year. And also from the sponsors up there, as you can see, Trace Analytics, Safe Food 360, FSC 22000 and IFS. They sponsored this to make sure that you've got free education regularly and a free certificate of attendance. And like I say, next year, we've secured sponsorship again. So we've got a program uh, together, some new speakers, some existing speakers, lots of new topics. And they'll be all uh, on the website in the next week or two. And we'll start promoting them and send you emails to invite you to register for those. So all there is to say is uh, thanks for your participation today and um, joining us. Um, have a great Friday. For those of you who uh, will be having some time off, uh, enjoy your Christmas and we'll see you all in the new year, 2016. Okay. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.